And I have to ask, what does W-D-Y-G-U-M-S-B-F-A-C-C-I-W-R-F-T-B-O mean? Is that why don't you get under my skin, babe, for a change? Because I would rather fight to be okay. Oh, that's is. awesome. <laughs> Nothing. That is so I, I I forgot about this. This video is brought to you by Tile. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Dedicated to the local and not so local music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today my guests are a couple of guys I found on TikTok, actually, uh, which sounds weird, but <laughs> they're they're in a couple different bands. But the band we're talking about today is a pop punk band out of uh, South California. Their band name reflects their philosophy of promoting positivity and just a positive mental attitude. Their new single, Out of Time, is out now. And please welcome to the channel, Promotive. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey. I'm on free. Good, good. Good. Right on. That was quite the intro. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Room 6. I, I believe you have something to drink as well. Welcome to Room 6. I, I believe you have something to drink as well. Uh, I got water. Close enough. Clink. <laughs> Cheers. I have lovely, lovely Room 6 whiskey. Which is not a thing. Oh, if anybody wants to sponsor me, whiskey companies. I will drink your whiskey all the time. <laughs> um, so before we get into the, the the questions and the rounds of dazzle and everything, I I had to ask, what? Sorry, brain fart. I just realized I'm going to ask this later. So forget about that. Um, <laughs> I'm a professional. Yes. Interviews going great. No worries. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Our TikToks are much more ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I've seen. I've seen some. Yes, <laughs> that's how we found you. Um, so, <laughs> I, I, I do want to get that out of the way. Um, Jacob and Mel, uh, aside from being in Promotive, are also in a band called Ghost Life. Uh, however, currently not on hiatus, just on like not active right now, right? We're taking a nap. Take, yeah, take, yeah, just a small nap. <laughs> a ghost nap, a dirt nap. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's what I was going to say. Bef before we get going, if you want to be on the channel, I promise I'll be much more coherent. If you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, um, hit me up. If you're in the Vegas area, you can come right here to room six, maybe, you know, do a little performing, hang out in the kitchen, drink my booze, whatever. Or we can do virtual like this. Hit me up using the email address down in the um, description or click the Room 6 social media link. I'm all over the internet. You can find me all sorts of ways. That's also where you'll find ways to support the channel. And you can find information about my uh, weekly podcast about local uh, shows called R Room 6 Radio. It's on Twitch and YouTube, among other, you know, all the audio places. And also, I have something kind of cool coming up. If you happen to be in Las Vegas, May, May the 6th. I've got a Room 6 Rocks Spring Showcase where I will have five former acts that have played right here performing a full show, and they'll be, you know, merged, they'll be fun. It's at Hennessy's Tavern on Fremont Street Experience. So that ought to be a, a blast. And uh, keep, you know, subscribe so you, you find out when that's happening. Now then back to you guys. First question. Why... Promotive. I, I know you were saying you want to promote positivity, and originally it was hyphenated, and then you condensed it. But what were the other band names that were kind of in the running? Well, like most band names, you start with the band name generators. You start with just a list, a, a mile long of different names. You you tape them to the to dartboards, and you kind of just throw the darts until something sticks. Um, we actually originally landed on a name called the Post Credit Scene, which we thought was kind of cool. It sounded like Kind of clicky, kind of like, oh, we're like we're like a club or something. And then we were working with uh, a buddy of ours who was kind of helping to like consult us because he he's in a signed band himself. Mm -hmm. And we told him the name, and he's like, "Yeah, that's that's cool. That's a name. It's a little long. <laughs> so it's a long name." And we're like, "Yeah, it's not gonna work, is it?" He's like, "So, back to the drawing board." Um, eventually we landed on promotive and like you, like you mentioned, it originally did start hyphenated like pro motive. Um, but then I just thought promotive kind of rolled off the tongue a little easier. Um, 
and yeah, that's kind of the mantra of the band is just kind of bringing positivity and just good vibes and fun times to to people's lives. Um, cause I think all four of us in the band, uh, have some form of mental, you name it. Um, it so <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I think all four of us kind of just mutually agree that no matter what we may be struggling with or what other people may be struggling with that there's always a brighter side to it. And there's always a silver lining. There's always a way to look through all of that and still be able to smile and go about your, your go about your day and go about your life. Definitely. And I think that's, it's refreshing. You know, uh, a lot of the acts I, I deal with in some way, shape or form with the channel are in the heavy metal, hard rock, thrash metal all that you know where the, the the they use that font generator with all the barbs sticking out of the name you can't read it you can't understand the, the band names. yeah <laughs> and it's it's and and let's just say they're not exactly promoting positivity a lot in their music <laughs> um and and i it, it is refreshing so thanks for that yeah of course i wanted to um start off with kind of a, a more usual interview question that uh, i ask of all my prey and I want to talk about your earliest musical influences. And when I say that, what I mean is, what is that moment that you remember going, I want to do that? Ooh. Hey. You want to start? Oh, man. It's so hard uh, for me to, like, if you want to roll back for me, where the journey begins is, I think I was, so I was a big nerd in elementary school. I didn't really have, like, a calling but i was like the smart kid you picked on i didn't have glasses but I, I i had everything pretty much short of wearing glasses uh i was picked last the basketball i never like did well i was like almost rap last when we ran the miles and all that stuff and no one ever like really wanted to hang out with me plus i also like tested into this like smart kid program that also separated me from the rest of the school so it kind of like put a target on my back as far as getting bullied and i was a boy scout and my boy scout troop had this like drumline program for a little bit and then one of my friends in boy scouts like handed me a pair of drumsticks and then that kind of came like a little naturally and this was around the time where lincoln park was popping off right so i was learning uh what's it called i was just learning how to play drums i picked up and learned faint by lincoln park and like i just kind of did this privately i was the kid who played like warcraft and like <laughs> <laughs> just all like the rts games and all that stuff and then one day uh, someone catches wind that i play drums and then uh i think the music hour that we did every monday like the music monday thing we did they just said hey bring your drum set and play a song so i covered faint by lincoln park in front of like all the I think sixth graders and, and then you were in what grade uh sixth grade so it was like 2005 oh, I you were saying like you were in fourth and they were six sorry no no it was like the last year of elementary school so i had like had this weird reputation of being like the awkward nerdy kid up until this very point so i played on like and then they had like periods so I played Fame by Linkin Park, like, all right, by my standards. <laughs> and then everyone was like, yo, this is dope. I didn't know you did this. And then immediately after, the teacher had me, like, play to the other set of kids. So eventually, I played, like, this song, like, twice in a row to kind of, like, just exemplify, like, hey, it's not just playing a recorder or violin or piano. You can play rock and you can play drums. And... Immediately after that, I just felt like everyone's perspective of me, like, changed. And that kind of, like, set a tone in myself, like, wow, like, I really identified with this. And people were trying to pick me at basketball. Like, I just started fitting in more. And I'm not saying, like, do music to fit in. But this made me feel like, wow, like, it's not, it, it made me feel like I belonged in society. It's quite strange for me to describe it. But after that, um... What's it called? That just kind of like instilled in me that like I just want every kid who felt bullied and every kid who felt like they couldn't fit in that they could. And music was my way of fitting in. That's awesome. And, and that is 
so. a pivotal moment. So thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Um, how about you, Jacob? Um, well, as far as musical influences, I don't think my story is quite as uh, inspiring. <laughs> um, I kind of found music through... <laughs> I found rock music through Guitar Hero. I'm not going to lie. Hey, um, shame. Um, and then very particularly, though, it was Guitar Hero 3. And I kind of just played it for fun. And then I started latching on to a lot of the, the music I was pl like playing and kind of listening to the words. Very specifically, um, bonus tracks, they had Rise Against on there. And Rise Against very quickly became one of the biggest influences as a, as a, as a musician, but also just as a person. Mm -hmm. Um... And they were definitely the band that made me think, wow, I want to do that. Um, combination of that and also investing far too many hours into that game to get <laughs> really, really good at it. For my dad to walk in one day, it's like, you know, if you spend as much time on real guitar as you did playing this game, you'd probably be pretty good. And I thought, huh, you're on to something. <laughs> Bet, Bet, fam. Dad. <laughs> so, yeah, so... I proceeded to, and I, and I had instruments around my house because my, my dad's a musician and my, my grandpa was a musician. And he kind of gave us all, um, me and my siblings, he gave us all instruments to kind of inspire us to learn. And I was the only one that really latched onto that. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a little guitar at home. And I think it was around when I turned 14 that I would wake up a couple hours early before school and just go on YouTube and like find lessons and kind of teach myself how to play. I don't tell anybody. I, I pirate bayed an entire like lesson catalog um, from this. Uh, I think he still do the. He's, I think he still does stuff on YouTube. That Marty Schwartz guy. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But I sorry Marty. I, <laughs> I, I stole your program. <laughs> tiss, tiss, tiss. Um, kids today, man. Yeah, I was fourteen. I didn't know. Anyway, um, so I learned. That's how I learned. And then fast forward a couple more years, I started finding out more about bands like Bullet from My Valentine and like going back to Linkin Park. Um, more, more of like the, I guess the, the metalcore scene, like Bring Me the Horizon, A Day to Remember, bands like that. And, made, and inspired me to learn guitar in that regard and kind of pick up on guitar like that. And then a co my cousin was also big on punk rock. And he's like, you like Res Against? You like all of these bands. It was like Black Flag, Minor Threat, uh, De The Descendants. Um, so it was kind of like, this weird, uh, this weird relationship between the punk world and the metal world that I just kind of fell in love with both, which is why I still love to play metal and pop punk and punk and all that stuff. Right. And somewhere down the line there, with in the in the uh, LimeWire days of finding bands associated with other bands, going down the the punk rabbit hole, I found bands like Blink One Eighty Two and Green Day, and I listened to like early early uh, Blink One Eighty Two stuff like Apple Shampoo or Josie, and I was like, this is sick. It's like still fast, but like it's a little different. And then I found Adam's song, and I was like, "Oh, what is? I'm sad now. <laughs> I have what the is feels. this feeling?" <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, and yeah, kind of just opened the door from there to after high school. Kind of got really into emo music, like Mayday Parade and All Time Low, Fall Out Boy, and that really became my mainstay for a long time. Even though I was playing majority in metal bands. I always had this small piece of me that was like, I really like pop punk. I really like emo. I want to do something with this. And I just, it was never a world I could really explore because everybody wanted me to be in a metal band. Right. So, hey, you want to start a band? We got to be heavy, bro. And I was like, sure, I guess. Oh, yes. I I'm one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> Drummers. Yeah. And then after, <laughs> and then after, uh, after enough bands had kind of come and gone, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to run with the pop punk thing. And, uh, Mel was originally recording the songs for me as an engineer. We caught through about two or three tracks. He's like, you know, if you ever need a drummer, man, let me know. And here we are all these years later. Nice. You need your watch for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, those are two of some of the most powerful like answers to that question I've gotten in a long time. So thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, no problem. And, and Mel, going back to yours, your um we were talking about how you you were always kind of like uncomfortable until that moment which leads me to my next question segue hey you let the editor on on an uncomfortable just have free reign to the editing yeah absolutely that was uh i figured it'd be a good clickbait that that like, video did go crazy but i was wondering <laughs> how much 
actual input did you have or did you literally like was that was that honest first reaction we, we uploaded it and yeah. watched it yeah <laughs> after we uploaded it so there was a fair chance that we could have gotten canceled if <laughs> if yeah. he just it's went like, hit, hit, like, really. was right <laughs> Yeah, you're there were there were definitely a lot of a lot of I'm sorry, mom moments in that video. <laughs> nice, uh, but but moms moms are always proud. So um, yeah, from there I wanted to we we talked about earliest musical influence. I want to go ahead and talk because you both have been in more than one band together uh, and done other things musically. I want to talk about your favorite show memory, and it doesn't have to be a good one. <laughs> it could be like things went way off the rails. Or somebody went to jail, or it could be that you checked off certain rock star checklist things in or in a what is your favorite oh, show man. memory? Oh performing. Okay. Performing. Try so this is not so this is on stage, not off stage. Correcto mundo. Yeah. I gotta narrow this one down. There's a lot. Okay. Um I have you go first. Yeah, you go first. Okay. So this is a very technical, but like uh very difficult. I'm talking about the the first li live stream we did at Live and Loud. Okay. Where you, okay, so I don't know how to explain this, but if you're uh like a tech techie, this makes sense. So we play with in ear monitors, and uh, each of us gets like our own mix, and I prefer to listen to like a version or MP3 of the song. That way, uh, if a musician messes up or something. Like, I'm just still fundamentally listening to the song, so I'm, like, the rock of the band or playing right. in the pocket. So, I guess th Jacob is the session master. So, Jacob is the person in charge of building that session for me and me being a princess, just, <laughs> like, putting it, like, just sitting down and playing. And we are doing, like, a live stream during the pandemic. And no one knows about this until, like, after the fact. But he ch we were playing around with the key of Adam's song. <laughs> Coincidentally. And then he, uh, yeah. So he, we, I guess, were in the key of, like, in drop C or something like that, right? So the song yeah. is in C major. Right. And we play, originally we played in drop C sharp. So we would pitch the guitars down in the in our computer in the software that we yeah in the yeah. software but there was one practice where we didn't have the software working so we just played everything in drop c sharp and we have the song in the in the click track like way way low as like a bake track as a guide in case we get lost and since we were playing in c sharp for one practice i pitched it up one half step oh no and we had decided to not play this song like prior to the stream yeah and then someone in chat requests it, like coincidentally. It's like, oh, we know how to play this. Let's just do it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. And then I queue it up in the, the computer and then launch it. Be and the reason why we use a computer to all the people who want to say that, like, that's dumb not to use a computer. All we don't, like, use a pedal board or anything like that. The computer just changes the patches and changes everything for us so we can focus on playing. Mm -hmm. Got so it. for me... I'm listening to the song one semitone above what everyone else in the band is performing. And I just hear cacophony, like, the whole time. Like, everything, like, perfectly <laughs> out of tune with each other. But and I'm was... just there with, like... Huh? I'm sorry, I'm, but, you're, 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 but you're just drumming, right? Yeah, I am. I, I am assigned some vocal parts to which I just chose not to do. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah i was like i'm not i'm not going near that <laughs> suddenly it's so jazz. i'm just <laughs> it was very jazz yes so uh, yeah. i was and then if you watch the video of that i think it's still somewhere on the internet i'm like <laughs> like just playing the song i've never lived this one down too <laughs> it will go down in history as one of my my greatest failures <laughs> Uh, it's an opportunity. It's not, <laughs> well, we won. Like we 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 played. We straight through. We came out of that thing alive, and no one knew what happened except me. That was the biggest inside joke. That's awesome. that's the biggest on stage like weird thing. I think 
we have another one. Uh, I, I, I might want to talk about that other one unless you're going to talk about that other one. I don't know. Um, I have <laughs> one that I want to talk about, and it's not a bad thing. It's actually kind of a good thing. So kind of circling back, I was talking about me being kind of in and out of metal bands for a long time and not really having an opportunity to really pursue pop punk or like mu- kind of original music that, that I made. Um, Promotive is the first real project where I've been able to do that. Um, where I like this first batch of songs was more or less songs that I wrote and have had in- influence or input from the rest of the guys. But I remember we were just getting the band off the ground and then the pandemic hit and kind of just pfft, everything. Um, but we, we kept pushing through. We, you know, we, uh, we stayed on top of like Twitch and TikTok and all the other social medias and just, it's like, well, we can't really play shows. We can't do much of anything. We can't meet up to write. We can't meet up to record. Let's just kind of figure something out. Um, and I think we put a song out during the pandemic that ended up, I think it was in my head. Yeah. And because of all of the like Twitch streaming we were doing and just like building community building, and it ended up being to this day is our most popular song on Spotify. Yeah, I think it was um, like over 50,000 streams or something. Yeah. Pretty wild to think about still, but fast forward all of that to get, oops, sorry. All that to say, fast forward to 2021 when we're able to play shows again and we decide, well, you know what? It's time for our first show. So we ended up booking our own show at Chain Reaction in Anaheim. Um, We put the whole show together ourselves. We built the lineup. Um, We hustled all our own tickets. Um... Like we, they're like, yeah, you guys don't have to sell tickets. We don't care. But we, we were, we were pushing our own tickets, getting people to, to the show. And like, I think it was a super, super gratifying experience that show because I was told we were like double digits away from selling the place out. Wow. Like yeah, very, very, we very close. 40. Yeah. No 40, one, like 40 tickets. Who sells out their first venue. show? That's exactly. Weird. Yeah. And so, and like. I think it was just a really like cathartic moment for me because it's like this passion project of mine that has literally been on the back burner for almost oh like five six years of my life like finally comes to fruition i finally have a good solid group of guys that want to like share in this with me and like have have the same vision have the same goals and like we just hit the ground running and like it, it was a it was a really really beautiful payoff to see it just like all come together and like see so many people that I've known through all facets of life uh, just come together and like support this this little dream and it's kind of it's kind of set the the tone for the band like from the from the get go like as, as far as our live performances because like now it's like when I, even at our worst shows I think back to that and it's like okay like we'll be all right yeah I mean you can't get much more positive than selling out your yeah show. that's pretty amazing um and and it isn't like you don't know everybody like they all are there for you mm-hmm. so that's awesome speaking of shows uh you just got done with a multi-show extravaganza tour any yep. stories from the house show in nevada Ooh, yeah actually <laughs> so because there's always stories it's less from the about... house show in nevada let so Funny enough, less less so the the less so the show itself, and more so kind of leading up to that was nice. quite the experience. Um, so we had played in uh, Fairfield, which is kind of in the Bay Area of North California. Mm-hmm. Uh, we played there the day before, and my guitar player, who also does a good majority of backing vocals and good majority of guitar playing, now that I've kind of shifted more towards half guitar, half like just straight front man in the band right um he comes up to me at, after the set he's like hey man i don't feel good at all how much would you hate me if i didn't go to vegas with you guys nice. and i was like I, 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 I like i was just i was taken aback um because all of us in the all of us in the band at this point had like been hit with just this gnarly sore throat none of us were like really really sick but just all of us had the like uh, 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 allergies going yeah <clears throat> I kind of still have a little bit of it, but, um, so I'm driving, we're driving to Vegas and I'm like on my computer trying to like reset our set 
and I'm trying to remember how to play a lot of these songs that I haven't played in a long time because now I'm just fronting the band. Right. Um, so it's like, okay, well, we can do it as a three piece. I got to figure this out. And like, we kind of collaborated, figured it out. Um, I had to effectively learn all of the parts that he sang. Mm -hmm. And then uh, because I'm a jerk, I play harder than necessary drum parts. <laughs> And then I'm just like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. So. But at least they weren't a half tone. It was up. very. Yeah, that I, is I true. Probably vocally that is true. Was. <laughs> well, yeah. we, that, that's the other thing because we all had those, we all had sore throats. We had to pitch the set down like two steps, or two two, a whole step, two half steps make a whole. Um. So we had it was really low like down tuned set. So it kind of felt like a metal band. Someone even came up to me after the set. They're like, bro, you guys sounded heavy, bro. <laughs> It was, it was hilarious. Like, We're not an easy core band, I swear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it was pretty stressful leading up to it. The, the show itself was cool. Um, one of the Tamer House shows I've been to, I'll say that. Um, but it still, it still got pretty rowdy. People were moshing and nobody broke anything, which is cool. That's um, rare. But it was a really good time. It was really, yeah, it was a really good time. <laughs> nice. So, um, I awesome. guess that house show historic... Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Oh, that... I don't know if you've heard of like Drew. Uh, I think I forgot what the vent, the house had a name. Chateau. The, yeah, Drew Chateau. And then they usually like threw house shows for touring bands historically. And then they said that that was the first house show they had since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then I th I don't know. There was like bigger bands that played through there all the time. Yeah, they they mentioned like bands like Belmont and the Home Team. Right. Uh, but it's not an actual some venue, right? It's band. literally someone's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's someone's house. Yeah. It was just like all about the scene. See, I'm, I'm always in, on the fence about. I, I haven't heard of it, by the way, but I'm always on the fence about like, do I go and like cover a show there, thus drawing attention to them throwing shows without permits? <laughs> like, are they charging people for these, or is it, you know, are they is anybody selling alcohol? That's kind of the weird thing um, about Vegas. Yeah. I think it's. Uh, I, I know that what they do is that. We're, I know that we're selling merch, and I know that there's, like, a donation to the band. Yeah. Uh, the way it was set up was that it was it was all donation-based. It was all ages, so there was no alcohol on the premises. There was no drugs, no 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 weed, no nothing. Um, they were really, really strict about that because, like, obviously, if, if anything come, gets in, then that's when it can be a real problem. Cool. Um, but that's how they were able to avoid it. And they've been doing shows there for years, so a lot of the neighbors are pretty cool about it as long as like <laughs> they're done at a certain time you know yeah um oh, so the neighbors don't have a choice but to listen <laughs> yeah so yeah, i hope I, the neighbor came out <laughs> like, yeah hope, cool. hopefully whoever's playing today is good yeah right and all we, we it was a three band lineup on that show and it was, all the bands were fantastic you know i'm gonna have i i'm gonna have to track it down now thanks to you and and like i feel better about putting them on the channel so to speak because yeah. I don't want to get them in trouble for doing a cool thing, but you know, alcohol bureau control boards, no joke. So yeah, that, right. that's good news. Absolutely. Um, awesome. So Drew, it's called Drew Chateau or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You know what? If you're and watching I think this, the only reason it was a house show, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, if you're watching this and you were at that show or you've been to a show at the Drew Chateau or whatever it's called, leave a comment because I need more information. Give me, give me, give me. All right. Um, <laughs> before we move on, we are going to take a quick booze break, and we have a message from future Josh. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. It's a sad fact for musicians on the road, or just playing at their local bar, but gear gets stolen sometimes, because people. Fortunately, there's a way to help get it back. With Tile, you have a backup plan when something needs to be found. Just tap Find in the Tile app. Watch the Tile detector's green rings fill in as you get closer to them. Tile also has lost and found stickers with a QR code full of your contact info. That can be scanned by whoever finds it. If you lose something when you're out and about, Tile can help you locate it. View its most recent location on a map, and it'll show you the last time it was with you or the last time your Tile app was able to locate it. You can also tap notify when found so the Tile network, which is every phone running the Tile app and their network extenders, can help locate the lost item. Each device on the network is able to help locate tile trackers and send location updates to your tile app. Anonymously, of course. And with the Premium Protect Plan, Tile will even reimburse you if something can't be found. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, 
And for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get peace of mind and save some cash. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Tile for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back. Um, before we get into some more questions about you know music type stuff, I have a question regarding one of your posts. And I have to ask, what does W-D-Y-G-U-M-S-B-F-A-C-C-I-W-R-F-T-B-O mean? Is that why don't you get under my skin, babe, for a change? Because I would rather fight to be okay. Oh, that's is. awesome. <laughs> Nothing. That is so easy. I, I, I forgot about this. I Oh, yeah. Like, it, I just kind of guessed. Like, I was like, uh, it's that always, sounds right. It's always W-Y-D, not all that. Yeah. <laughs> why don't you get under my skin? Yeah, that's amazing. Who came up with that? Was that... Was that AJ? Is that is that a, is that from a song? Remember. Yeah. Yes, that's that's, our... that's from uh, Uncomfortable. Ooh. That's our our single. There you go. I was like, if it's not, mm -hmm. it should be. But that is. Yeah. I I was sitting there going like, it it must mean something to them. But I, I wow, I'm amazed I got that in one take. Right on. I'm so, trying to figure out. What? I'm trying to figure out like when that was posted because I might be able to figure out who posted it. Oh. <laughs> uh, it was from the it was posted by the the band account on Facebook. So that's what, where I saw it, but it was probably um, on TikTok. I think it was a, I think it was a TikTok you shared. Mm -hmm. I really think that was either you or AJ. Yeah, yeah. AJ's our bass player. He's he's uh, like a social media. He he follows a lot of the trends. So he's like, guys, we have to post this. I'm like, okay, cool. Nice. There's always one in every band. Yeah, guys, we gotta do a dance TikTok. <laughs> We actually did do one uh, once. We never. I don't think it ever got posted. But we, uh, remember, we did the the like when it was that trend with like the hands and you you danced in a circle. I don't know. I don't follow those. We've done so many. I'm busy, <laughs> We've done so. I'm many. busy making content, Jacob. Okay. <laughs> I am, I'm literally so busy that I have to remind myself like make music, not excuses. Turn around, go touch those things. Maybe mm -hmm. you know, maybe make a TikTok or something, and you know, but I'm, it's just constant constant editing because people, it's it's tough man it's first world problems but you know um yeah, it is tough though I, I get that like i think a lot of people don't a lot of people outside of that world don't really understand how grueling the social media like keep upkeep can be oh like, yeah how taxing it can be and like just like it all facets it, it, it always breaks my heart but it never surprised me when like your favorite tiktoker or whatever is just making you know, like I'm I'm leaving this platform. I'm burnt out, or or you know, I can't do it anymore. I get it, like you, and and yeah. but even just for me, like I love creating content like this. It's the editing because I don't have an editor like unlike you guys. <laughs> What's an editor like? I mean, we edit our yeah. content. He edits for me. I edit for him. Yeah, we, wait, we wait, wait, wait. So who who edited uncomfortable? Too. Um, neither of us. We just paid one, like one okay. of my friends who I shoot videos with right. that like I've just done music videos with. And he was like the guy that like tag teamed with me when we did a lot of music videos before the pandemic. Right yeah. on. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm working on getting to where there, I have a budget and then I can be like, okay, I can now just batch record and send it to somebody <laughs> and be like, Here you I go. feel that. And, and, and <laughs> that is, I, I already know who I would do, who I would send it to as well. And it's, Pretty reasonable. The problem is, gotta get that. You know, gotta secure the funding. Um, so yep. before yeah. we get into, I, I have a quick question for not a question really. I wanted to shout out. Hey Mel, you're a fellow Eagle Scout, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. You, you mentioned earlier. And Twenty ten. What was your? <laughs> I, I'm not going to say what year mine was, but <laughs> I'm fifty. <laughs> but what year? Or sorry, what was your Eagle Scout project? Oh well, here it is. Uh so I built a stage, a fold up stage that my scoutmaster helped me like design. Mm -hmm. It's it folds up like a ping top ping pong table for the city of Anaheim to host local bands and music. That's awesome. Play. So it split into three sections. So they started throwing like music festivals around their uh what's it called stuff it's it's this it's a center called downtown anaheim which is like right in front of city hall 
I think the stage has since been retired because it because it has moving parts. Yeah. It's not just like a. I got platform. to play on that stage too. Nice. Funny enough, right. um, there was there. I don't know if it still exists, but there was a a bus like a, a short, you know, the short bus that mm -hmm. a, a local bar uh, had turned in had, somehow had converted into a stage like the side opened up and everything and you want to talk about That's sketchy cool. stages to stand on <laughs> oh my god but it was still cool but yeah they, they would literally have just instant parking lot show you know um, that's awesome that's rad right uh now what about you jacob any scouting uh experience there no I was a uh, I was a sheltered homeschool child, so I didn't do much of much of anything. Ah, uh, okay. Well, it's, besides, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Nobody's perfect. Um, yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Mel a question here, but same question goes for you. Only, eat, you know, answer it however you want. And um, Mel, are you still eating Cheerios after concerts? Cheerios. Yeah. No, you posted a bowl I, I, of Cheerios after concert. Was that a bowl of Cheerios? I think so. It looked like Cheerios. Had like some green ones and some, you know, beige ones. And you said a uh, post concert. Was that, was that Apple Jacks? Okay, I have no idea when this was, was. I think it was Apple Jacks. Now that you mention it, it's. I don't remember. It's from back in the day on your Instagram. Oh. Now I need to know. Okay. Late night cereal does hit the spot, though. Yeah. So, what is your post-concert meal now? Oh man, it's been Denny's like religiously ever since this man has entered my life. Post show like, Denny's, baby. I feel like that's a theme. Song. You know what's funny? Okay, so for me, originally <laughs> it was post show In and Out. Okay. Um, because SoCal, you know. Yeah. Um, so I would always want to go to In and Out after a show, but then. As I started meeting more people and like we would meet up and go to shows and as I started playing more shows too, I think a lot of it also has to do with chain reaction as well. Um, but I was like, you guys want to go to in and out It's like, no, the lines are too long. We can just go to Denny's across the street. And so that became a thing. And then Denny's at the time had the 2468 menu. So it was a lot more affordable. And it's like, you know what? Post show Denny's is kind of the move. You just hurt my heart a little um, bit. I missed that. Yeah. I missed me that too. so bad. Um, so now, like, Post Show Denny's just hits the spot every time. Nice. Um, I, I I feel like I've been living, missing out on my life because that's not for me. That I, I would come home and do, like, um, stick with me here. Mm -hmm. Frozen waffles in the toaster, peanut butter and jelly sandwich between the it two. sounds of them. amazing. Some 2% some, some or fat-free milk, whatever milk I have. Some you know cold glass of milk, and whatever I did to my body during the show set me right. Throw on the TV, and just yeah, it, it, it's amazing. Um, it's a good deal. The only thing better is if you if you happen to have a little bit of leftover cooked bacon, throw some bacon in the middle, and suddenly I'm Elvis. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so I'm with it, I like that. Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> getting back to our usual interview questions, we kind of talked about it in the intro here. But I'm going to ask this anyway, okay? It's time for your elevator pitch. How would you define your band's musical style? Go. Um, I would. I like to say it's a, a love child of, like, the 2000s emo sound and, like, the modern pop, like, pop-influenced sound. Like, um, you got your, like, your all-time low, Fall Out Boy esque era and then you've got your like mgk uh what's the other guy Jaden, like those more modern uh rappers that are just playing pop punk yeah um it's a kind of a, a blend of the two like the songwriting the angst and like the emotion of the early 2000s combined with the production and the more like polish uh sound of the the modern era that's how i would describe promotive nice that's, that's yeah it. like a lot of our a lot of our songs have like a mix like out of time is a perfect example like where out of time has that like kind of faster second verse it's really angsty really fast it's the circle pit part and then immediately after comes into the chorus where it has this like trap beat underneath the chorus and like production's really good the mix is really good on it so awesome 
And you know, you bring up a good point that the whole <clears throat> positivity and positive mental attitude thing, a, people can get it twisted, and you probably have with you, where they don't immediately equate that to also heavy or, you know, moshable. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is a thing. Um, and for me, as as a, a, a singer, songwriter, and, and like lyricist, I've always focused on the lyrics, which is why it, I will admit younger Josh struggled a lot with, you know, the metal that was like guttural and, you know, and, and you're, you, you literally can't understand the words without the lyric sheet. I, yeah. And, and then, then I got, then I was given an album to review for room six and I had to really like strap on the headphones and like really listen. And I mean, I got the lyric sheet, but I was like, and suddenly I started hearing certain things filtering through certain undertones and, <clears throat> and subtler things. Mm -hmm. Not such a struggle with your music, fortunately, but um, mm -hmm. it's, you could be positive and still melt faces. So I, yeah. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Totally. And that's like, that's something I've always strived for in terms of lyrics for, for this project. Like no matter what the sound of the, of the, the, the song is, I try to even like, well, even talking about the lyrics, like if I'm writing about something that's not necessarily a happy topic, if I'm writing about like going through a breakup or friends like falling apart or relationships falling apart, I always try to end the song or have some section of a silver lining in the song. Like I think about the song um, Out of Time, going back to our most recent single. Um, that song's all about friendships falling apart and just you kind of feeling like it's your fault like what do I, what do, what do i have to do to make things right kind of thing right um and i think the second verse it talks about like i know this this isn't i know it's not the first time it i know it's not the first time that i've let you down the way i did but i pray that it's the last time and that this time we last kind of thing where it's like i know what i'm doing to kind of keep this cycle of losing people but i also really hope that i can right. amend that and fix that for to preserve relationships moving forward kind of thing right on uh well we have so two more questions so you made it almost and i want to thank you again for watching if you're watching this and you don't know who they are thank you very much for watching that means that you're you know supportive of, of room six um really does do appreciate all of you and the best way you can support Room 6, other than maybe go buy some merch, like Make Music Not Excuses, or, you know, I I work out so I can party hard, whatever. Um, <laughs> I have I go to room6.shop, I have all sorts of merch. But the best way you can support the channel is by clicking that sponsorship link in, down in the description that I, I talked about earlier at the sponsor spot. If that interested you, please consider using my, my link. It'll help me, help the channel, and everything, any dollar I, amount I get goes right back into... Uh, helping the local scene or, you know, making better videos. So that's my plug done. Now then, gentlemen, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I want to, let's start a fight, okay? <laughs> what is one thing that you wish you could change about your local music scene? You start this one. Huh? <laughs> you start this one. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was in this pissing contest. <clears throat> like, I don't know how to explain it other than just like, this is kind of the reason why I can give or take metal now. Like, I've been playing in metal bands since I was consciously a drummer with a group of people. Right. And although I love like metal music and I love like elements and people, it's just been in my area this very strange like click combined with it like combined with like like i don't even know these people like each other sometimes when they're playing shows with each other just right. because i'll i'll i'll, f I'll see ju them just invalidate each other's successes behind each other's backs oh, man. and it's very hard for me to to feel like yeah you you can i swear on this <laughs> like you better goddamn well <laughs> i was like it was like how do you fuck with this guy how do you like this person 
and then all of a sudden just have all of these like you know contrary like opinions or like whatever and i get it everybody has their own ways of success i don't really think that there's like a path i think there's just like a series of fortunate and unfortunate events that lead you to where you get to in the industry and where you get to in the world and i just feel like <clears throat> you know the people that make it hell yeah and then there's this weird sense of like undertone that when you do well you don't deserve it or if you like are doing well or you have like a polish like you paid too much money to get to your position or some weird sense of like every time i feel like someone is successful in our area there's this immediate and this might be like a thing everywhere there's this immediate like reciprocation of justifying why they got there and why they didn't deserve it and i wish that would like go away because i just remember like growing up watching like a band blow up and then like you know that they came from like this set of three other bands that they used to play all the time with and then a year later all those three other bands like went on tour and blew up too and now it's like everybody just is waiting for the moment for one band to slip up so they can justify why they weren't there. Yeah. I, I and totally, I'm tired of that. I, I can, it's the bitterness and <clears throat> I get that a lot of it. This is time to be armchair psychologist. A lot of it, I think is um, some transference of imposter syndrome. So they're like, you know, well, they can't be, you know, they, they can't be that much better than, than me or than us because I, you know, cause we're not that good. Um, and it, I, I totally agree with you that that is such something that I personally would love to change. However, I will say, especially immediately after quarantine, where suddenly live shows were a thing, it didn't matter what you played. It was packed house and everyone loved whatever you did. Um, yep. Here in, yeah, in Vegas. That was a good time. Yeah, here in Vegas, I am seeing, uh, like I just did a um, uh, Apocalypse in the Desert uh, heavy metal festival where it was literally like 12 or 13 hours that I was there. So it was 26 bands on the bill and they were split between two oh. stages. There, 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 were, there are these two venues, Backstage Bar and Billiards and Fremont Country Club. And there's a door separating them because they're owned by the same people. And so Fremont is usually where like the big acts go. And Backstage Bar, you see a lot of the locals there. However, this was, it was literally every 20 minutes or 30 minutes, Another stage, there's a, a, a band performing, and it was back and forth. So the the crowd just kept going like this, back and forth, and me with my cameras going back and forth. And it was it was <laughs> cool, but I was, I was knackered. I was so tired. But it was really cool because it wasn't all just thrash metal, death metal. There was some new metal. There was some, um, I, I would say, pop. There was a, a, even a, a, not really pop punk, party punk, if you will. But there was like, okay. there was that. And it was all levels. That being said, I have seen recently where shows, the, the, the bill, you're just like, why are these five acts together? They're so different. And, but, but somehow it works. And, and whoever put the show together has them in a certain order that there's this buildup and, and it makes sense. Yep. Um, and and it was, it's refreshing. So hopefully you can see that in your local scene uh, soon, sooner than, rather than later. Yeah. All right. Um, Jacob, anything to add before I move on to the last question? I would say like kind of in a similar vein that I've noticed in the, in the local scene, I think one thing I would love to change is this like strange sense of entitlement that a lot of bands or artists have. Um, and I don't know if that's just like a, a Southern California thing, like, oh, I'm in, I'm in Hollywood, blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't know. But there's a lot of guys that I know where it's like, they'll roll up to a venue. It's like, oh yeah, we're better than all these bands or like, oh yeah, like. <laughs> we're, we're gonna sell the place out it doesn't matter or like uh like yeah we deserve free drinks or something like this and that because we're insert generic local band name here yeah um and i think that like a lot of that really takes a toll on the local scene and it kind of goes hand in hand i think with this like kind of crab mentality that, me that mel was talking about where it's if one band succeeds it's like well why why do they succeed they're not we're better than them and it's like okay but are you mm-hmm you know, it's like there there are some local there there are some bands that have succeeded out of the scene that yeah, may not be as talented as you, but 
But you know what they did right? They strategized and they planned and they knew exactly what they're doing and they executed it perfectly and they nailed it. Yep. So whatever whatever they did, you should actually, instead of trashing them for not being as musically proficient as you, take a look at what they're doing. Study their study their success. Like learn from them. Don't just try and like what what's the word when like you look down on someone like uh don't do whatever. Don't look down on them. Like because yeah. they've clearly succeeded and, and you're still writing music in your mom's basement. Yeah. And you knew musicians yeah, out there. Ah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, there's not even basements in Cali. There's not basements in Vegas either. Um, you knew musicians out there. This is so true. Battle of the bands aside, or songwriting competitions aside, which are competitions, music is not a competition with anyone but you. It's just you versus mm -hmm. you and, and, and how you were yesterday. And it's a craft. Mm -hmm. And don't let yourself get suckered into that, that mentality. But also, if someone is having that mentality and is very obviously not wanting to change, don't let them bring you down. You know, a rising tide lifts all ships. Mm -hmm. You know, promoting positivity. Uh, yeah. It, it also can sink you know everybody so everything you said i totally agree with um one of the reasons why i started the channel was because you know there wasn't a whole bunch of just showcasing local music on uh, uh youtube or, or social media other than hey we're playing a show here's a flyer here's a flyer and it's become this thing four years later where bands are reaching out to me about shows they're doing but they're also saying can you come review the show? Can you come? Because they know that somebody's going to want to, you know, watch it that couldn't be there, and it's a way for the show to live again. And I'm, I'm, you know, we're all trying to to lift each other. And I'm seeing lots of shout outs from, you know, other from acts that I went and reviewed a show, and they took they took pictures sometimes with me, or or they're they're taking my videos and stuff and putting them online, sharing them and saying, you know, hey, shout out to you know so and so for for playing here, whereas they they wouldn't have that uh, ability, so I don't know if that made any sense, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does definitely. Cool. That's super dope. You started doing that. Oh, thanks. I have a very understanding family. <laughs> My wife and kid are very tolerant. So, um, last question. You made it. Yay! We're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence question here a little bit. This is also talking to new musicians. Okay, let's pretend we're talking to Little Jacob and Little Mel. Okay, oh boy. got that in your head. What is one thing that you wish someone had told you before you went down this twisted road that is doing music? And don't say change your strings. <laughs> oh boy. I think for me, the one thing that I would have told myself as a kid, two things actually. One, don't get discouraged. Um, because when I was younger, that, I was very easily discouraged by like seeing big bands and wanting to emulate whatever they were doing. And here I am in my bedroom writing really crappy demos on GarageBand and expecting them to blow up. No one cares about them because they sound awful. And I'm just like, oh, and I go on there and you, you post your, your teenage angsty rants like, oh, well, I guess nobody cares about me. Like on my band account, it's like, right. I would be like, dude, what are you doing? That I would definitely say just stay positive. Stay positive and stay true to yourself. Those are the two things that I would really like try and like beat into myself. Very could. very on brand, Cause, sir. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it's like I spent a lot of a lot of years of my life kind of giving parts of myself away for other people to succeed. Like joining bands, starting bands, just so this person can be happy or that person can live their dream or this person can do what they want to do all the while i'm kind of shelving myself and the things that i want to do and and not in a selfish way obviously i'm not saying to like i'm not saying to like hyper focus on what you do and like forget everybody else like we need each other of course right. however there is a difference between helping your fellow human being and sacrificing everything you have and sacrificing your own happiness for someone else that chances are will not appreciate that unfortunately so good advice. i learned that the hard way so mel 
Oh, uh, man. <laughs> so it's hard to follow up that one because the half thing my mom always told me growing up is don't let people take advantage of you. And I never understood what that meant until I realized the band was a giant group project. Mm. And when, and when you care about something and you want something so much, you kind of do whatever you can to make it work. And when people don't reciprocate the same amount of passion that you have for the thing, uh, that you're doing or the thing that you're going for, or just don't have the same vision or probably just don't have the same drive. You end up pulling a cart with not enough horsepower and, you know, probably busting your engine. And I can say that I burned out a few times. So I guess there's two things that I'd say to myself is that invest in the people that invest into you. If there are people who are throwing you a bone and helping you out, those are the people that should be there forever um i've gone through so much bullshit with jacob and we've like accomplished so much and that's just why i like making music with him because whether or not it be positive or negative things that we go through it's really easy for us to just get in the room talk about something and then make it the past and then look towards the future and work on things that you know and everything that we have is always constructive and just when you feel uncomfortable, I guess, baby Mel, <laughs> uh, never, like, always make it known. And the people who listen, the people who understand, and the people who, like, hear you out, those are the people that you need to keep close. And the people who tell you what you want to hear in the moment and act on things that they, like, are completely contrary to what they say or what you want, just calmly walk away and to summarize all of that or to put like some silver lining on all of that is that it is worth it there is nothing that i have found that has ever made me feel as happy playing music ever there are other things that make me happy i love my fiance i love uh what's it called my family I love playing like <laughs> I'm games. Sorry. What's it called? Like... My family. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was I was toggling between mom and dad, and then I was like, oh that yeah, that's awesome. my sister. That was awesome. She's not. <laughs> Mabuti. That was great. It's 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 hard because like you know the band is the family too. Yeah. All of that stuff. Look, I'm trying to recover here. <laughs> back pedal, back pedal. <laughs> but it there's nothing that like has made me feel like more alive and i don't know nothing has ever i've had significant others say that they don't support what i do and then tell me that they'd leave and then tell me that this wasn't like a thing that they they wanted to be a part of or that they want like i've had people that expect me to give up but i have essentially designed my whole entire life since i was that one moment playing drums in front of like a bunch of kids and then feeling like when i was a kid and then feeling like there was like purpose. And I think like there's, it, it's just so hard for me to like go like, yeah, I'm going to stop doing this. And maybe I'll stop doing it when my hands like reach full carpal tunnel and I just can't hold sticks. Right. Or maybe something will change. But like, I think I'm always going to find a way to like give back to the music community and find a way to do the things that, you know, do music because there's just nothing that has like connected me more with people nothing that has made me understand like how the world works if not like music and i don't know how to express that other than like yeah it's worth it even though people suck even though people don't understand what you're trying to do even though like your family might, might not be able to understand until like you have something to show for it 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 will work out it's just a matter of time and the time comes eventually. And if it's not now, just rearrange some stuff and it, it'll, it'll work out. And it's always going to be ups and downs. I couldn't have said it any better. Beautifully spoken, both of you. And um, thank you again for coming on the channel and thank you for watching. Stick around. We're going to be seeing a music video from them, uh, probably for uncomfortable or something. 
We'll see. But I'll catch you in the outro. In the meantime, we're going to temporarily say goodbye. If you want to be on the channel, like I said, hit me up. Uh, if you are in the Vegas area and want to know what shows are coming up this week, every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Room 6 Radio over on Twitch, also on YouTube, and anywhere you hear an audio podcast is available. Um, other than that, I think we'll temporarily, temporarily say goodbye, guys. Thanks for having us. Ooh. Appreciate you. No worries. Uh, actually, I guess this is, this is goodbye because the outro will be just me. In the meantime, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time in room six. And uh, yeah. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. I want to thank Promotive for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and a great music video. If you want to know more about them, please check out the links down in the description for all their social media. If you want to be on the channel, hit me up. And if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe, click up there. And it really does make a difference, so please ring the bell so you get notified. And what else? Oh yeah, if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.